Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 27th, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop, wide-angle view of the Northeast Pacific Ocean, Hawaiian Islands, the bottom left, Pacific Northwest to the upper right of that. And you can see this very strong storm out there northwest of the Hawaiian Islands. This is going to be causing some ridging. It's going to get amplified, and this is going to start to protect us from some storms for a few days here. We'll take a look at what is going to come and what's going to break down that pattern here as well. Might get some lenticular clouds here over the next few days across some of the cascades maybe some fog out there as well so always something to watch here weather wise across the region taking a look here a bit closer across pacific northwest you can kind of see we're in this northwest flow this cold air flowing out across the pacific ocean back into oh, oregon and washington right now we had some lower elevation snowfall across western washington we picked that up in about what three days in advance there so yeah stick with the channel and i'll keep you up to date on the latest on what is to come. Glad to see that verify some convergence on activity is just wrapping up now. Some of these showers will persist through the morning hours and then be wrapping up as we go towards the noon and the early afternoon hours there. And then we'll start to build a ridge across the region. So taking a look here, I, I'm going to pause this and you can see the convergence zone activity there across, you know, some of King County, Snohomish County out there. And Snohomish County was uh, where most of that snow did fall. Got a lightning strike out there as well. There was some snow pellets, some small hail, and of course the snow accumulated on some of the roadways out there and you see as we scroll through this you notice this here the northwesterlies coming down the Strait of Georgia also starting to merge in here so it's kind of the, the Vancouver Island convergence zone starting to push down across the Puget Sound there and kept some of that snow going on in through this morning as well kind of shifted a bit further south but it was weakening still some snow on the ground out there however now, also over the next few days, uh, black ice, don't let it sneak up on you. It, it can, you know, this can really get you here. It, it actually, you know, ends up causing some pretty nasty accidents of black ice. It's tough to see on the roadways and you think the storm has passed. You don't really see it. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you're sliding off in the ditch. Now, Cocoa Rise, you can become a Cocoa Rise observer. Obviously, we need more because I know we got more snowfall than this out across the region, but we did have somebody right there report of uh, 1.2 in Monroe. I know Duval got some, some portions of Snohomish. You can see it this morning on some of the DOT webcams out there. Still a little bit on the street even, but you can kind of see it on the side of the roadways as well. So let me know what you guys saw out there also. And again, if you want to sign up Coco Raz Observer, go ahead and do that. Now, this is my view out of my living room window here this morning. Quite, quite a nice view of the Olympic Mountains there. Got a little coating of snowfall. Nice to see. You can see the Puget Sound and there's the Burien Hill over there in the foreground. Now, winter weather advisory is still to be wrapping up here. We don't have a lot more snow incoming, but there could be an inch or two more. And some of the Oregon Cascades, this is wrapping up this morning as well. These totals are from, you know, the last uh, 24 hours, really. So it, just, just a little bit more snow incoming. And again, slick conditions could be some uh, frozen surfaces out there. Now, Missoula, Montana also wrapping this up. Kind of a nice graphic here, snow squall risk. Some of this activity is still going on right now. Let me update that. In fact, you can see we still have some winter weather advisories. This will be wrapping up, though, as we go through the day today. Now, uh, scattered showers this morning. You can see this is down for portions of uh, Idaho as well. So, yeah, as this moves through, you can see the higher terrain definitely getting more snowfall with that. Now, looking across the higher elevations, uh, Stampede Pass, we're going to watch this here as we go through the upcoming season. And you can see we did get a little bit of a bump there. But again, we're still well below normal across a lot of the higher elevations and up towards Olali Meadows near Snoqualmie Pass, well below normal as well. And not good news because we don't have any more precipitation coming for maybe you know, five, six days coming in here. And we'll take a look at when the latest or then when the next system is supposed to arrive. And here we go, Lolly Meadows, again, kind of showing you the snowpack. They're not doing great. And all these red dots out there are 50% or below normal for this time of year. So here we go with the 850 millibar streamlines and temperature anomaly. Again, we talked about this system for the last three days or so. You can see some of that Arctic air mainly to the northern portions here across the interior of British Columbia, and it pushes off to the east of the Rockies there, and the system slides through, and you see this anti-cyclonic flow off our coastline. That is the ridging building here, and that's going to protect us from some storms. It's also going to point a very prolific storm track towards southeast Alaska and some areas high to Gwai, northbound, north of Vancouver Island with some impressive atmospheric river activity. Then we're on the south side of that warm atmospheric river, and we're not going to do our snowpack any favors here. As we go through this upcoming week, we're going to go through some overnight freezing, but then some daily highs are definitely going to be above normal, well up into the upper levels of the atmosphere. And then another system starts to arrive as we go through next Thursday and potentially on in through next Friday, of course, which is New Year's Day and then you know, January 2nd. So hopefully this one has some mountain snows for us here as well. 
It doesn't look like a particularly strong system, but that can change. Of course, we'll check back on that daily. Daily two meter max temperature is kind of showing you here. You can see some of these temperatures across some of the mountains warm it up. So it's again, not great for the snowback. And you can see what to expect across some of the Willamette Valley. It may be kind of foggy here at times for some locations over the next uh, incoming week here. So we'll see if any inversions are going to be forming here as well. And some chillier temperatures, as you can see, east of the mountains, the warmest portion of the Pacific Northwest down across the Southwest Oregon coast over the next few days. And uh, one more like composite reflectivity. This is what we can expect in the day today. Can't see some of these showers still, maybe another inch or two across maybe the Oregon Cascades. And then these showers are wrapping up as we go through this afternoon and through this evening. And then we scroll through the next 48 hours and you can see not much for Washington, Oregon, Idaho, or Western Montana. So here is 500 millibar heights. We're looking at the Gulf of Alaska, Pacific Northwest. Here you can see our polar lobe that swung through that brought some of that lower elevation snowfall and our shot of snow across the Cascades and this cooler air mass into the region, quickly getting out of Dodge. And you can see the next ridgepotamus here developing as we go on in towards Sunday, Sunday night. Here's Monday, Tuesday. We're now into Wednesday here and then Thursday, still some ridging. Then the troughing finally starts to return here across the Gulf of Alaska. We'll continue to watch this system. Hopefully it trends stronger and a little more progressive and brings some colder air aloft back across the area. But there you go all the way on in through a uh, very late Thursday night. So again, same map here, but I want to show you this plume of moisture. Look at this just um, as we're going through the day today, you can see this really get developed across portions of Southeast Alaska. Western BC, just flowing in there, multiple rounds of it. Starts to get down towards Vancouver Island as we go through about Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Still not making much headway towards Seattle, Portland, Eastern Washington, Oregon though, but it might clip some portions of the Southwest BC. And then the next system comes crawling through as we go through the end of the week, as I mentioned. Now, wind speeds coming up here. You can see how we have a little bit of this Fraser River outflow and some north winds coming down the Okanagan River Valley, some gusty winds out of the west here for the gorge, but we're gonna get a big wind Wind shift here over the next couple of days. Watch this as we go on in through the day on Sunday. You'll see things start to switch up. There it goes about Sunday noon. Winds become easterly. We start to get some of this offshore flow as this ridge develops across the region. You can see some of these winds get fairly gusty through the gorge there and the stampede gap. You can see them coming out of the east. There are some easterly winds across eastern Oregon, Washington, and all the way out across the coastal areas as well. This is just off the surface, but yeah, you will get a little bit gusty with this system. And let's see, I'm going to go to surface winds 80 knots, see what it shows. You can see you know, coming through the uh, stampede gap right there. And you can see it coming across the Cascades of Oregon and again through the gorge there. And again, that's going to be starting there on the day Sunday. Now, snow depth in inches, scrolling through this here pretty quickly, you can see we actually lose snow over the next six days across our mountain ranges there. And you can also see even the European shows that snow did accumulate in the convergence zone activity here and melting down over the next few days. Probably not gonna last all the way on in through Tuesday there. It's probably picking up some of the snow on the higher hill, a little bit of a, a terrain resolution issue there. But yeah, we do lose some of that snowpack across the higher terrain over the next week or so. So. Yeah, hopefully we've got an active pattern for us coming here because we dramatically need it. And I'm looking forward to maybe getting some lower elevation snow at some point this season. So I keep looking for it. Nothing imminent just yet, but I'll show you what the models are saying. Apparent temperature. Also, look at this morning, the Fraser River outflow, bringing some teens down into uh, all the way up into Whatcom County there towards Bellingham. They had a cold weather advisory up there and you can see it's pretty chilly across some of the northern zones across Washington, some of the higher train, eastern Washington, Oregon. It is a bit brisk out there for the next couple of mornings. So just heads up for that. And visibility in miles. If I scroll through here, you can kind of see as we go through the next few days, there's Sunday morning. It does show some patchy fog forming at times. It doesn't look like too widespread, but again, it is fairly it is fairly noticeable here when you scroll through the next few days. So, so we will be watching this. We'll see if an inversion sets up and whatnot and kind of revisit that on a daily basis. But as you can see by Tuesday morning, it is pretty foggy across some portions of Puget Sound into the Willamette Valley. But again, we'll watch that as we go. Here's our big ridge here, Quilly, Washington. This is where they send the upper level soundings for our area. So that's why I like to show this one. And again, you can see the big ridge and then who knows what's going to happen after that. Probably the Gulf of Alaska will get active again here as we go through the first week of January. But what that means exactly just yet. We are not sure. And now if you take a look at the artificial intelligence ensemble, I mean, there goes the system that brought their chillier air mass. And you can already see our ridge amplifying here across the Pacific Northwest protects us for a few days. And then the next round of troughing gets going here as we go through this January 1st, January 2nd, and hopefully we can keep that troughing going. Who knows? And we'll continue to check back this on a daily basis. 
I mean, look at this raging across the West Coast all the way up towards January 10th, though, with the troughing fairly far off the coastline. Showed you that one already. And if you want a seasonal temperature outlook, so let's take a look at this. I think I have that clicked. Yep. Yeah, let's go back to that one. And we go to January, February, March. We're still, you know, this is issued December 18th. We're still supposed to be below normal as we go through the January, February, March time frame here for the Pacific Northwest or some of it. Kind of a mixed bag across Oregon and Idaho a bit more. And if we look at that, you can see above normal temperatures also. Now, something else I want to show you, you want to look way off into the future and see the seasonal forecast for June, July, and August above normal. And sorry, we click back on that and we're going to back up there one. And you can see also below normal precipitation as well as we go through June, July, and August. Hot and dry summer, maybe, who knows? We'll see. Take that with a grain of salt. Just having some fun with the forecast there. Check out the Patreon page. Link should be down below. And what else? Um, we'll do this all tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good day and I'll catch you guys in the next forecast.